Be very careful with the words maybe, probably, might, possibly. Tell me what you would do, information you would gather, and how that helps you arrive at your decision. Hello, Dr. Humans, it's Christine here, and today it's all about the long case lingo. So in this exam, what's key? is thinking and sounding like a physician. We want to show the examiners that we are ready for advanced training and so we must articulate ourselves and our ideas in a way that is fluent, coherent, easy to follow and has a mature perspective. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my hot tips on how to sound oh so physicianly, polished and professional. And in an upcoming episode, I'm going to show you how to dig yourself out of a hole, such as when you say something wrong or when the examiner asks you a question and you realise that you have a major knowledge gap and you forgot to ask the patient something. All of that gold coming up in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But today, I'm going to be sharing some of my favourite long case vocab that you can use in your presentation and your discussion so that you sound amazing and if your first language is not English and you're sitting this exam I would like to extend you a massive high five that's incredible okay so the lingo first up is signposting throughout the presentation of your long case you want to try and use signposting so the examiner knows exactly where you are so you're easy to follow and there are lots of things to signpost which means that you're always at risk of sounding a little repetitive. And so when we're signposting, it sounds better when we add a little variety. And so these are some of my faves. Choose the ones that are really organic for you and stick with them. For example, with regards to, with relevance to, with respect to, in terms of, this occurs in a background of, this occurs in the context of, this occurs in the setting of, you catch my drift. Or maybe that's not quite your jam and you might just want to spell out exactly where you are. And this also sounds fine. So you could say something like, the first major morbidity that I would like to discuss. The next morbidity, coming on to her diabetes, next I would like to discuss, right? So lots of different ways to do that that's a little bit more direct. Right, so whatever feels natural, I just want you to pick out a few phrases that you really like that roll off the tongue and use them. And within the presentation of medical conditions, a few handy phrases that you might use are, this was complicated by, consequent to this, subsequent to this, since the time of their transplant, their course has been complicated by, Whilst Jenny was unable to recall her recent blood results, I would be interested in reviewing. So just some ideas. I'm sure that you'll find better statements if those are not resonating with you. But whatever phrases you choose, make sure it's organic, make sure it's authentic, comfortable and confident. Because you're not trying to be someone else here, right? You're trying to be you, but you're trying to step into the future version of yourself, your physician self. So you want to be yourself but you have to be your more polished professional self right that version so how do they talk what do they say so play around with some of those linking statements find the ones that feel good come up with new ones and then stick to them at the various different parts of your history and make sure that you add variety as you do this another key communication piece in the exam is how we frame things when it comes to the discussion so in this exam you're being assessed from the viewpoint of being a person's physician so that means that you should be answering questions from that perspective from that narrative you are this person's doctor and you're going to be discussing your thoughts about their issues and this person this long case patient is a unique individual. So you have to hold those two things, you being the doctor and them being an individual who requires a very personalized management plan, right? You need to do the two things. So when you're expressing your thoughts to the examiner, we want to be doing this in a way that signals to the examiner that we own the patient and that we see them as a unique individual. So say for example, you were asked to manage their diabetes. What not to say is something generic like, well, the guidelines for diabetes say that we should start with metformin and aim for an HbA1c of 7% in this age group 
da 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 da. No, no, that is not what you want to do. Of course, in your head, you have those algorithms and guidelines to reference, right? You can use them to construct your plan, but you would want to say something a bit more like this. I would be keen to improve Jenny's glycemic control. In order to do this, I would like to review her HbA1c trends over time. And in Jenny, I would be aiming for an HbA1c of around 7% given her age and comorbidities. Given that Jenny is struggling with weight loss currently, I'd be keen to introduce oral hypoglycemic agents which are weight neutral or might even promote some weight loss, such as metformin. And depending on her progress on metformin, I might think of adding in an SGLT2 inhibitor in future. So you can see here that I'm phrasing things in a way which lets the examiner know that I own the patient, I'm telling them what I would actually do in my clinical practice, and I'm using the phrase, I would. I would be keen to review, I would like to, I would be aiming for, I would be considering, right? All the things. I would, I would, I would, I would. Okay? <laughs> the other thing that I'm doing here is individualizing my knowledge to my patient. And in doing so, I'm coming up with a personalized, viable management plan for her. And so I'm thinking about the guidelines, but really how do they apply to this person? And that's what the examiner wants to hear. So for any management plan that you introduce, you really wanna be personalizing that to the patient and only do the things that are appropriate in that person. So if your patient is allergic to something or they've tried a treatment in the past that didn't work, then you don't want to suggest those things as part of your management plan, right? You may acknowledge them, given that Jenny is allergic to whatever, or given that Jenny has tried multiple diets for her weight loss thus far with minimal success, I would, and then arrive at a management plan that you think will be viable and help this person in front of you. And so even if you're working through a bit of an algorithm in your head, you don't want to describe it that way, like a generic guideline. I only want to hear how it applies to this patient in front of you, so make it so. <laughs> and the last thing that I want to give you here when it comes to long case lingo and how you express yourself is to make sure that you're not using words of uncertainty. Be very careful with the words maybe, probably, might, possibly. These words, of course, can be used in a confident way, like when you're presenting a balanced argument or something like that. Because medicine, by its very nature, is an art and a science, right? There's often uncertainty. We literally hold uncertainty in every single scenario. But what I see candidates do as they express themselves, they use these words as an opener. So they say, I would probably say that I might consider, I would maybe do, <laughs> right? So you can, you can see how that doesn't sound quite as good. If that sounds like you, if you do have a habit or a natural tendency to place those uncertain words in there, I want you to tune into that and train yourself out of that. So when uncertainty exists, I would recommend that you perhaps focus in on firstly obtaining the information that would increase your ability to make the decision and go from there. So in terms of approaching Jenny's diabetes, I would first like to review relevant investigations such as her most recent HbA1c. I would also like to gather more information regarding her BSL trends throughout the day so that I could adjust her insulin doses optimally. I would be aiming for an HbA1c of 7% in Jenny and if she wasn't meeting this target, I would be keen to introduce an additional oral hypoglycemic agent such as linagleptin, whatever it is. So you can see how different that is, right? I'm using a lot of uncertainty in there, but I sound rather competent when it comes to the diabetes, okay? So I'm, I'm uncertain how I would manage it because I need more information and then I'll go and get that information and then I'll come up with a plan. So what I don't want you to do is open with words of uncertainty. Tell me what you would do information you would gather and how that helps you arrive at your decision. Okay, so those were some of my hot tips on how to sound oh so positionally and absolutely shine in your long case. And in the next video, I'll be sharing some of my tips on how to crawl out from those holes that you create for yourself in your long case discussions. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> and of course, if you are studying for your clinical exam right now, then come along to Rock Your Long Case, the program. 
In this program, I will teach you how to take the history ninja style, how to create a winning issues list, opening statement, how to shine in the discussion when answering questions, and we cover all the juicy things, transplants, the renal and dialysis long case, so many gen med topics, diabetes, osteoporosis, falls, periop med, behavior change, heart failure, depression, and even rheumatology. It is high yield indeed. There's so much on-demand content available right now and there is more on the way. And if you want to be part of the live group coaching in this program, then you must sign up before the 31st of March. After that, I will be closing the doors to the live group coaching and it will no longer be available to purchase. The price of the course will stay the same, but only the on-demand content will be available to buy. And the reason for that is because I want to serve the people who sign up for the live coaching. I really want to nurture them through this season. So if you want to be part of that group and become one of my ducklings, then go ahead, sign up right now, and I will see you on the inside. And otherwise, stay tuned here on YouTube. There's so much more on the way. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.